welcome back to this our continuation of the evolution of zombies. Last time we delved into the production of the virus that would spawn the zombies in the Arclay Mountain incident inside the management training facility and the Spencer estate. Both zombies and crimson heads would run rampant through the region and feast on anything that moves. After stars intervened, both the training facility and the mansion were destroyed, but the nearby town of Raccoon City would end up being the beginnings of a new nightmare. Before we begin, don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell to stay notified of new content. Two months after the outbreaks in the Arclay Mountain region, the surviving STARS members made it their mission to stop Umbrella. After facing blocks on their investigation from Chief Brian Irons, Chris, Barry and Rebecca all left Raccoon City with Jill and Brad staying behind. But another incident in the Raccoon City sewers would cause a severe outbreak and the city would be overrun with zombies in a matter of days. Even with the support of the UBCS and the RPD, the city slowly turned into a necropolis. Very few survivors were left with Jill and Brad not leaving before the city was locked down. The UBCS and RPD were also down to just pockets of men after several ambushes and assaults by the zombies. This would be the start of the final days of Raccoon City. There are conflicting reports as to what happened during this period, but these are the most consistent events that happened during the Raccoon City outbreak. The T-virus that was released into Raccoon City was the Epsilon strain, which was stored inside the Umbrella Underground Facility, Nest. Taken from the mansion after Birkin left to head up the Golgotha virus project, also known as the G-virus, Birkin attempted to sell his research to the US Army. Umbrella got wind of this and sent a team headed up by Hunk. This incident would be known as Operation Nest Wrecker. During a standoff, Birkin was severely wounded. After Hunk and his team take the virus samples, Birkin uses the G-Virus on himself and goes after them. When Birkin and the team sent by Umbrella fought inside the sewers, the viral samples were released via rats into the local water supply. Then in less than a week, the T-Virus took hold of the city, creating a plethora of mutated abominations and zombies. The RPD and UBCS quickly fell and most of the city's inhabitants became another number on the death toll, which was numbering up to 100,000. But zombies would not be the only lethal mutation released into the city. Due to the T-Virus coming from Nest, this strain had been experimented on and had mutated further. This caused the birth of another offshoot of the zombies. Ones that had gone through the V-Act process, which had mutated into a new creature similar to the Crimson Heads. But this time, they shed their skin entirely, develop exposed brains, extendable tongues, razor-sharp claws, and are capable of climbing many surfaces. The officers of the RPD dubbed these creatures the Lickers. Considerably more lethal than the Crimson Heads, the Lickers had a significant advantage over zombies and even the Hunters, with the ability to climb any surface while also being able to use their extended tongues as long-range weapons. Resistant to handguns and very quick, these creatures were deadly to those not packing a little firepower. But Lickers did have one disadvantage. They are blind and rely on sound to hunt their prey. Moving quietly would allow anyone to avoid these skinless monstrosities. Even a flashbang could easily disorientate them, allowing for a quick getaway. Lickers became one of the best all-round BOWs and a happy accident for Umbrella all because of a single mutation in the T-Virus Epsilon strain. Lickers are so unique that when they first appeared in Raccoon City, it was discovered that a colony of them had been formed inside the Apple Inn and in the RPD building, as per the events of the Outbreak Files and Resident Evil 2. This was one of the few instances where a BOW had formed some kind of nest, possibly showing signs of improved intelligence over zombies. Even more worryingly, the potential to reproduce. This BOW would be so popular it would be sold on the black market for military purposes. But Lickers would go through several forms throughout their appearances. In the underground nest facility, Lickers would undergo another mutation as per the events of the original Resident Evil 2. Their other form was the Enhanced. 
becoming more resilient to firearms and their three fingered claws morphing into a single sharp claw and two smaller ones protruding from each hand. Their appearance would also change with their bodies becoming navy blue instead of red. It's uncertain what triggered the mutation and it hasn't been replicated since. One possible culprit could have been the P Epsilon anti BOW gas that was released into the nest facility. Albert Wesker and Tricell would even experiment on liquors by applying the base progenitor virus to these creatures to create the liquor betas. The only real difference with these creatures being a higher reproduction rate and an improved sense of smell, but they also gain a new weakness with their hearts becoming vulnerable to knife attacks. Then after the last Plagas parasite found itself on the black market, a set of liquors was implanted with the slave parasite to be controlled by anyone wielding a dominant Plaga in their body, as seen in the events of Resident Evil Damnation. The zombies of Raccoon City would also have another unique form, which has only been seen once in all the series, the Suspended. This creature was formerly a woman whose identity we can only theorise to possibly be the owner of the Apple Inn, or at least a guest who didn't escape the city. She would become infected with the T-Virus Epsilon strain and mutate into a zombie. Later, after going through the V-Act mutation, she would become something akin to a liquor, with the exposed muscle and extendable tongue, but she would retain most of her human form and be just as dangerous as a standard liquor. It is possible the VIAC process wasn't complete and resulted in the half mutated form we know, but she shared their weakness of high pitched noises overwhelming her senses and would be killed off by a group of survivors trying to navigate the inn. Inside the nest facility, they were experimenting with the T virus by infecting flora and fauna, which resulted in the birth of Plant 43, most likely based on the research notes from Plant 42 at the Spencer Mansion Research Lab. After the failed attempt by Delta Team to retrieve the G virus and the resultant T virus outbreak, Plant 43 would become neglected by the remaining scientists and would kill those who got too close. Any survivors or zombies in close proximity would end up being infected with spores, allowing them to be transformed into plant-like ivy zombies, or ivies for short. These creatures would behave just like zombies by eating living flesh, using their evolved large mandibles to devour victims. Also, these creatures were controlled by Plant 43, and most likely acted as protectors rather than seeking out victims constantly. The account of the effects of P. Epsilon on Plant 43 and the Ivies differ between Resident Evil 2 and the remake. In both instances, the anti-BOW gas had no negative effects on these creatures, but it did destroy Plant 43, stopping the possibility of any new Ivies being created. Also, in the original Resident Evil 2, the ivy creatures would become poison ivies, with the ability to spit poisonous acid at victims when exposed to the P. Epsilon gas. Ivies would also reappear during the South America incident involving Leon Kennedy and Jack Krauser, this time as ivy XYs, half human, half ivy formed creatures, that were sold to Javier Hildago on the black market. They would behave in the same way as ivies, but with more mobility and speed thanks to their bipedal form. A similar creature, the Green Zombie, found only in the Arklay Mountain region in an abandoned hospital was also created. Mutated T-virus plants would latch onto a zombie and through parasitic infection could embed their roots deep and control their victims. Still behaving like a regular zombie, these Green Zombies would get close and release a poisonous cloud of gas on their prey. They would also release this poison as a form of defence when attacked too. With William Birkin infecting himself with the G-Virus and becoming the G-Creature, he would go on a rampage and infect Sherry Birkin, Ben Bertolucci and Chief Brian Irons, all with G-Embryos. All with varying effects and conflicting accounts depending on the scenarios. In the remake he would infect a lot more victims including zombies and they would birth malformed G-Mutants. But Birkin would also infect some civilians with the G-Virus itself via secondary infection which would create the G-Zombies. These would behave the same way as regular zombies, but with the distinctive eye that belongs to all G-infected subjects. Also, because the virus was not injected directly into the victims, these zombies would not gain the regenerative and mutating properties of the standard G-infection, and would still become necrotic eating machines. 
During the events of the Resident Evil 3 remake, the Nemesis Tyrant displayed the ability to infect zombies with a duplicate of the Nemesis Parasite, which would envelop the head of its victim and control them. The head would now have claw-like appendages acting as a shield against bullets and only open when the body took damage, or when the zombie fell to the floor, or when they are about to attack by smothering the head of a victim in close proximity. They also had a whip-like appendage similar to the tongue of the lickers to attack prey at a distance. This hybrid creature was only seen in Raccoon City, but bared a striking resemblance to the Plaga-infected Ganados of the incident in Spain in 2004. Capcom even confirmed that the Nemesis Alpha Parasite was designed to be a man-made version of the Las Plagas Parasites. The final zombie type was found inside the underground Nest 2 facility connected to the Spencer Memorial Hospital. This zombie was different with only calcified, almost melted skin covering their bodies. Their eyes have gone and they are able to regenerate from injuries at a very fast rate. These creatures were the pale heads. Just like all zombies of the Raccoon City incident, they were created from the Epsilon strain of the T-Virus. But researchers were uncertain what exactly caused the change. Whether it be part of the VIAC process or some other outside influence, it is unknown how these came to be and haven't so far been seen anywhere else. After the US government launched a missile strike at the city, cleansing the city and some of the surrounding mountains, the outbreak was contained and the majority of the population all being killed in the missile strike. More T-virus outbreaks would occur over the next six years on Sheena Island, Rockford Island, the Umbrella Antarctic Lab, South America, the Ocean Liner Spencer Rain, and the Umbrella Russian Caucasus Lab, with zombies being the prime BOWs occupying these locations. In 2004, newly recruited US agent Leon Kennedy would head out to rural Spain to find President Graham's daughter, Ashley Graham. Arriving at an unnamed village, he would encounter hostile locals who would attack him on sight. The villagers turned out to be infected with the Las Plagas parasites, an ancient parasitic organism which was buried and fossilised under the castle of the Salazar family. But the local cult, the Los Illuminados, or the Enlightened, headed up by Osman Sadler, would unearth these creatures, and through the infection of airborne spores it was discovered that the Plagas were just dormant, not extinct. With the help of scientist Luis Serra, Sadler and the Illuminados began experimenting on the Plaga parasites. They were able to create a dominant Plaga, allowing a host to be able to control subordinate parasites in their victims. The victims with subordinate parasites in them would be known locally as Ganados, more commonly translated as livestock. While not zombies in the traditional sense, these Ganados would share some traits with their necrotic relatives, those being the use of superior numbers to swarm their enemies, increased strength, and resistance to knife attacks and also gunfire. But the Ganados would not share the same zombified appearance nor the cannibalistic traits of the zombies. Instead they would still behave like normal people until they perceived a threat and turned violently aggressive using weapons and melee attacks on their enemies. They would also have an orange glow in their eyes at night and in some cases their skin would become grey. When Ganados took significant injury the plaga parasite inside them could erupt from their head and take full control of their body. There were three types of parasite that could form, A, B, and C. But all the forms of Plaga had one significant weakness, intense light. Plaga parasites outside their host bodies would only be found at night time, and this flaw would make the Ganados very vulnerable during daylight hours. The Plaga parasites would be also used in the creation of other animal-human based hybrid bioweapons, through gene splicing and experimentation by the Illuminados. But Leon would rescue Ashley, and the Illuminados along with Sadler would perish. But Leon would be forced to give up a dominant Plaga parasite sample to Ada Wong who was sent to retrieve it as part of a mission. This wouldn't be the last time the Plagas were used in a bioterror incident. Zombies would become less prominent as new viruses and parasites and BOWs started to surpass these creatures but then the T. abyss virus came to be, after being developed by a team of scientists at the Montpellier Marine University. Combining the abyss virus found inside a deep sea creature with a sample of the T. virus. 
This virus would allow for the mutation of victims into marine-based mutants, but bioterror group Il Veltro would get hold of the virus and use it in their attack on the aquatic city of Terra Grigia. Using a new form of hunters, the Farfarello, a form of hunter alphas created by injecting them with the T-Abyss virus, they killed hundreds across the city before it was decided by the head of the FBC, Commissioner Morgan Lansdale, to use the Regia Solar satellite to cleanse Terra Grigia. Il Veltro went dormant after this until they seemingly returned and threatened to infect one-fifth of the world's oceans with the T-Abyss virus. Having already infected the Queen Zenobia and the Queen Semiramis cruise liners, the passengers and local marine life in and around the vessels mutated, and a new zombie was born. The Ooze. While sharing the same behaviour as zombies, seeking flesh to eat, they don't share the same classic zombie look, with no sign of necrosis. Instead taking on a blue semi-translucent skin and a similar physical appearance to the regenerators of the Los Illuminados incident in Spain. Also, their mouths have adapted a mutated tongue-like appendage to suck blood from their victims, like a leech. Further offshoots of the ooze were generated, such as the sea creepers, Malacoda, and the half-formed, semi-intelligent Skagdead. FBC agent Rachel Foley, who was investigating the Queen Zenobia, along with Raymond Vester, was attacked and killed by several oozes. In turn, she was infected with the T-Abyss virus and turned into an ooze herself but her mutation was more unique, as she was turned into a more resilient and faster ooze, even retaining some of her intelligence, at least enough to speak a few coherent words. Due to her unique mutation, she was able to hunt survivors all across the Zenobia and survive significant injuries. Eventually, the Zenobia and the sister ships were all destroyed and the T-Abyss infected creatures were killed, ending the threat of the T-Abyss virus except for a single sample that was handed over to Tricell after the incident by turncoat former FBC agent Jessica Sherawat. What became of this sample, or if it is ever used again, is unknown, but the constant threat presented by bioterror attacks would only become more intense. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a comment below. Don't forget to like and share, and also subscribe and ring the bell to stay notified of new content. Thank you and I'll see you again soon.